very good uptime, and, and nobody can compete with that. And I, I knew some people who did startups, and they couldn't. Oh, and they would have downtimes, you know, from data centers, outages, things that last in hours, and, and people would just say, oh, you know, you should just go to Google. Google doesn't have that, and that's just the fact of life. They can manage lots of servers very efficiently. Well, well, here's the, the kicking feature of uh, Peppermint. Uh, OS, which uh, sort of ties in with the debate we just had about the cloud, and that's uh, it's based on Lubuntu, and uh, it's completely as any Linux distro is completely customizable. If you don't like the cloud-based applications and uh, services, it is no problem to turn Peppermint into whatever you want it to be, and that's probably another advantage of uh, using the Peppermint OS because it comes very basic, it comes bare bones, it's installable on any any machine because of its low requirements and it gives you functionality straight out of the box if at a later date you want to remove these uh, cloud services then you, you've got all your locally uh, installable applications from your repos no problem at all so it gets a thumbs now, up from now, me now, well, before we get off of this to play the reverse argument is it is there a as far as i can tell there isn't and it's, it's a very young project so it wouldn't surprise it's not surprising it's not but is there any plans down the road to create a port of the Peppermint thing? Like if I'm running a different distro, but I want to add the Peppermint cloud hybridization to my other distro or other device. Pass. Uh, I, I, I think of it as a kind of a Kubuntu desktop or KDE desktop as a package in Ubuntu uh, where they could uh, kind of turn into a package, the collection, or kind of create a meta package for a... Um, for the collection of tools necessary to go into a session that's called a Peppermint OS session. Exactly. Uh, and uh, t talking of which, I don't know what Kindle Weaver's um, intentions are in the future for his ICE project either, um, which was very interesting, which only came about because of, as we said earlier, the um, Mozilla dumping their prism technology so uh, it's going to be it's an interesting project I've been following it for, for a few years um, and it, it's certainly it's got a very good team behind it very friendly team um, so it, it's one I'll definitely check out and I've been using it on a netbook and an Acer netbook for quite a long time now so uh, it gets a thumbs up from me highly recommended now before I get hijacked again I'm going to bring in the next uh, <laughs> I'm going to bring in the next the first track for today now this is uh, a track that probably means quite a bit to me it's um one from my old happier days of Amiga computing, and anybody who had an A500 or any of the Amiga family of computers will know what uh, a real computing experience in the home was like. And this particular track comes from a chap called who went by the name of Romeo Knight. Now, Romeo Knight was a musician for a scene group called RSI, or Red Sector Incorporated, and they produced a lot of uh, graphical tech demos, which um, many of the shops at the time which were selling Amigas, we're not talking about the large high street stores here now, this was the days of the independent computer seller and they were thriving on the high street. A lot of these independent stores would use these tech demos to sell the Amiga computer because they showed off perfectly what the uh, graphical capabilities were of the computer at that time. And this track is probably uh, my favourite of all of them. Um, it's called Rise Up and recently I interviewed uh, Romeo Knight on my site and he's a, a very interesting chap very nice chap you can get the link in the show notes so from about I believe and I'm going to be corrected here probably by somebody who will uh, tweet me or send me a mail but I believe from 1989 this is Rise Up by Romeo Knight <laughs>
Right, thanks for staying with us. Um, in regards to Rise Up, if you go onto YouTube or um, DTV, which is Demo Scene TV, you can have a look at the demo which that came from. It was the RSI Mega Demo. Uh, probably one of the first wow moments of the Amiga 500 computing experience. And it certainly sold an Amiga to me. So if you get an opportunity to get over to YouTube or similar and, uh, and get a look at the vid, because it's uh, it doesn't look much now compared to today's standards, but at the time it was uh, pretty damn impressive. Right, Roy, what have you got for us next? Well, we have the news about, uh, well, I should start with the uh, branch out and the fact that uh, Canonical is talking about what's going to be the next version of Ubuntu uh, 11.10. Um, well, one of the things I should point out is they, they received some good review today from the, uh, well, yesterday, from the British uh, press or computer press, whatever you want to call it. Not, not a Linux site, but a, an actual computer site in general. They received 4 out of 5, and, you know, they looked at the things like the Unity from the point of view of an average user, which I believe you can call your uh, your wife that. I know you, you told me earlier today that she, she happen, happens to like uh, Unity, uh, unlike yourself, but... Uh, in any case, uh, one of the changes they'll make is they basically drop Synaptic. Uh, I think that's a major, uh, major change again. Yeah, and that that's one of those changes. I'm a little, uh, I'm, I, I, I realize they want to run everything through the Ubuntu Software Center and and so forth, but still, that's I, I don't know. That's that has me a little. I wonder if some users will have some uh, <laughs> restraints and backlash. And uh, one of the things that happened when they changed GNOME, uh, the people's workflow and people's uh, habits were to, to be changed, and perhaps some people had some scripts uh, revolving around the uh, or latching on to the uh, what we have in things like Synaptic, and that's going to change it. Well, one of the things that I, I, I happen to notice on the KDE side is when I use, when I use any of the KDE front ends to find applications, they don't tend to have in terms of uh, in terms of breadth of search, they don't have the same thing as Synaptic. Uh, so very often I find myself having to use the GDK based uh, Synaptic in